fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! Matt Madrigo and his band of hide hunters were skirting the boundary of the hunting ground set aside for Chief Lame Bear and his tribe in their treaty with the United States government. Suspecting that the hunters might try to stir up trouble between the Indians and the settlers, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were following the trail of Madrigo's horses and wagons. There's something mighty strange about this expedition, Tonto. They're certainly not hunting buffalo. In fact, they've deliberately avoided the main herd, and they keep getting closer to Lame Bear's territory. They meet a hunting party of Indians, there'll be trouble. Ah, plenty bad trouble. Colonel Graves promised Lame Bear no white men kill buffalo in Indian country. Lame Bear promised Colonel Graves to leave settlers alone. If Lame Bear's warriors see white men break promise, then stop buffalo hunt and hunt white men. Burn houses. Kill everybody. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, 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 fella. Oh, Oh, can that be over there? A huge, pure white animal. There's an Indian on a pony. Ah. Him sacred buffalo of Pegan tribe. Young, brave, chief's son, ride with buffalo three days, three nights, this time every year. No white man come near white buffalo. The Indian sees us, Toto. I'll wait here. You ride over and give him the sign of friendship. Hmm. Me go. Get him up, scout. As Tonto approached the guardian of the white buffalo, he heard the hunting chant of the Pegans. Tonto stopped, dismounted, and stood with his right hand uplifted until the young Indian on a paint pony rode up. Greeting, brother. Good hunting. Oh, well, well. Good hunting. What brings you into the country of my father's tribe? I am Black Eagle, son of Lame Bear. Me, Tonto. In my heart is friendship for your people. We watch trail of men whose hearts are black to carry word to white warriors at fort if promise given to your father's people is broken. Good. Return in peace. I ride beside my brother, the white buffalo. He will show me where my people will find good hunting. I ride with no gun, no bow, no lance, no knife. 
No food. I ride for three suns and two sleeps. Then return with my brother, the white bull, to the lodge of my father. Good. Me go now. Good hunting. Good hunting. Get him up, Tom. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto back on the trail kept a wary lookout for signs of trouble, Matt Madrigo had halted his party in a creek bottom while scouts were sent out. Hey, Matt, that shorty coming. I bet he's got news the way he's pounding the trail. I hope you're right. It's up to us to grab the white buffalo and get clean out of this country as fast as we can before word gets back to the fort. The old colonel hasn't got much love for me. Oh, hold that. Oh, I'll show you. Oh. Well, shorty, you seem all heated up about something. Come on, what is it? The white buffalo, man. You never saw the light of it in all your life. An enormous old bull as white as snow, except for a few red feathers the Indians braided into his mane. Hey, $20,000 is a small enough price for a critter like that. Folks will travel miles and pay good money for a look at him. Anybody riding herd on this animal, Shorty? One lone Indian, boss. I put your spyglass on him from a half a mile away. And as far as I could tell, he's got no weapon of any kind. He never spotted me at all. He was too busy riding around the buffalo. It's a cinch, man. All we got to do is shoot the Indian, rope the buffalo, and load him into a wagon. Nothing to it. Not so fast, Shorty. You got to think ahead a little. Can't leave a dead Indian lying around. We got to catch the buffalo and the Indian. Dispose of the Indian a good many miles from here. Or else we'll have the whole tribe down on us. Like as not the colonel and his boys in blue. Do we aim to haul a critter clean out of the country by wagon? We sure can't drive him like a steer. Well, it's all fixed. The cattle car waiting at Buckthorn. Once we get them loaded and headed west, our job is finished. We ought to be gone from here before sundown. But suppose we tangle with troopers or the marshal before we get the white bull off our hands. Don't you worry about that. Here's a bill of sale, all drawn up legal. Lame bear's sign on it. And the signature of Archie Lazat, the Indian agent. The job I'm proud of, I do say it. But the agent's going to deny he ever put his name to that paper, isn't he? Shorty, how long do you think the Indian agent is going to live after the Indians find their white buffalo's been made off with? All right, now listen carefully, you fellas, what I got to say. This has got to be a clean job. I had to promise old Pete Barlam that no matter what, we wouldn't rile the Indians. I'm supposed to buy the white buffalo off them. He gave me $10,000 in gold. The old coot actually thought I'd hand it over to Lame Bear. Not knowing, of course, that the tribe wouldn't sell their sacred buffalo for a million. Pete Barlam will pay another $10,000 when the buffalo reaches Chicago. We'd skin buffalo the rest of our lives without making that kind of money. Yeah, but keep your orders in mind, you fellas. Do all the shooting you want to rattle the Indian and head off the white bull. But there mustn't be a scratch on the height of the buffalo, the Indian, or his pony. Understand? All right, let's go. Steady there, boy. Get up there. As Black Eagle, son of Chief Lane Bear, followed the white buffalo feeding peacefully on new grass, Matt Madrigo's men cut off escape in any direction. Come on, boys. Ride him down. Hit him off. Get a rope on this critter, somebody. Careful now with that bull. Don't bust that Indian's neck. Grab him and lift him off the pony. Sam's got the bull down. Hog time, boy. This Indian will bust my neck in a minute. Give me a hand here. Say, that's sure a handsome animal. Maybe we can figure some way to get an extra $5,000 out of Pete Barlow. Uh, see, those ropes aren't too tight, Sam. Right, boy. We don't want them marked up any. How's the Indian? They're still full of fight. If he'd have had so much as a knife on him, we couldn't have taken him alive. Hey, don't be afraid to rope him good and tight. Never mind the marks on him. As soon as we get to the Salt River Gorge, we'll put him away for good. Uh, Sam, yeah. you hustle up and bring over a wagon with a double hitch. Right, It'll take four horses to pull this critter. I bet he weighs more than a ton. Then what, boss? Then we got to burn the trail. Yeah. Get to the railroad at Buckthorn and load this critter. Right. If lame Bear's Indians find out what's happened to their white buffalo, this country will be too hot for any white men. I'll be glad to see those homesteaders cleaned out. Yeah, they got no business out here in the buffalo range anyhow. <laughs> Darkness was settling over the plains when the Lone Ranger and Tonto, following the trail of Matt Madrigo's gang, came to the scene of the capture of the White Buffalo and young Black Eagle, his guardian. To the experienced eyes of the Lone Ranger and Tonto, the sign was easy to read. Madrigo, him steal White Buffalo. Take him in wagon and take boy. 
son, Lame Bear. Evidently, they've taken Lame Bear's son alive. No sign of blood. Well, them kill him sometime. Yes, I'm afraid so, Toto. But Vigo knows that until the Indians are sure that the chief's son has been killed, they'll keep on hunting for him. When them know him dead and white buffalo gone, them try kill every white man round. Every woman and child, too, Toto. He'll be insane with anger. All right, come on, son. Get him up, Scout. Cautiously following Madrigo's trail, the Lone Ranger and Tonto came to the camping place of the gang about midnight. Dismounting, they crept forward until they could hear the horses in Madrigo's camp. Now, Tonto, give the signal. Let the Black Eagle know friends in there. Coyote signal? Yes, go on. Him answer, you see. We give more coyote talk. <laughs> Him sing Pekin death song. You listen. Him say, him tied beside pink pony. Can you tell him we're going to try to rescue him? Mm. Now I'll go to Black Eagle. You bring the horses. Uh, you bring them. Creeping inch by inch through the prairie grass, the Lone Ranger moved toward the faint embers of Madrigo's campfire. He saw the shadowy figure of the man on guard leaning against a wagon wheel, rifle in hand. Underneath the wagon, within a few feet of the man on guard, the Lone Ranger crept to the side of Black Eagle, lying on the ground near his tethered pony, his hands and feet bound to stakes. Four strokes of a sharp bowie knife, and the Indian was free. Another knife stroke, and the Lone Ranger had cut the paint pony's lead rope. Then, with a great spring, he seized the sentry, while Black Eagle raced into the darkness. This will stop you. No! He must have me. Here, horses. Easy, Silver. Easy. All right, let's go, Toto. Black Eagle has escaped right after him. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Out. You all right? Be here, sharp. Sentry's rifle went off when I grabbed it. Black Eagle may need a gun. Give the pig in war cry, Toto. Oh, here come Rodrigo's men. We must get together with Black Eagle. Then, Toto, you ride to the fort and tell Colonel Graves what's happened. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Out. Rodrigo quickly called off the pursuit when he saw that his fastest horses were out distance and returned to the camping ground. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, fine sentry you are, Sam Mitchell. You must have been sound asleep. Oh, I was as wide awake as you Too were. Too bad they didn't get your scalp along with your gun. My son, our flame bear's brave will be hot on our trail. Come on, man, no time for squabbling. Hitch up the wagon. Let's get going. Right. It's only a short distance to the railroad. If we hurry, we can make it before the Indians catch up with us. Come on, now, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. For the rest of the night, Matt Madrigo and his men hurried toward the railroad with many an anxious backward look, expecting to hear the thunder of hooves and the war whoops of hundreds of Pegan braves. But they were followed by only two men, the Lone Ranger on the great horse Silver and a silent young Indian brave, Black Eagle, son of Lane Bear, on his swift paint pony. It's breaking daylight. Pour the ladder into those horses. We should make the railroad another hour. Shorty, you ride on ahead to scout for trouble. The Indians might try to head us off. Right, boss. We're goners if they catch up with us. It could have been me on guard instead of Sam Mitchell. Why do you shut your mouth and do as you're told? Uh, I'll tend to Sam Mitchell. Yeah. Nobody but an Indian could have sneaked into our camp like that. Now get going and keep your eye peeled. I'm going right now. Get up there. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When Colonel Graves get Tonto's message, he ordered young Lieutenant Bannister to take a detail of 20 men and, guided by Tonto, overtake Matt Madrigo. Madrigo's scout sighted the cavalrymen as the first daylight flooded the prairie. He rode back to warn his boss. Hey, look who's coming yonder, Matt. Hey, it's Shorty. He's got news of some kind. Bad news, most likely. Oh, 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 easy. Oh, easy. Easy, boss. Oh. Well, Shorty, what is it? The United States Army, that's what it is. Getting this way at full gallop. Now we are in port. I say let's scatter. Every man for himself. You just cool down, Shorty. Listen to me. I'll handle the situation. Here's where that bill of sale is going to come in handy. We'll just mosey along natural till the soldier boys arrive. Slow down the team there, Lamb. As Lieutenant Bannister led his men over a rise in the prairie, they saw Madrigo's covered wagon and a group of horsemen leisurely moving in the direction of the railroad. Well, I, yeah, I don't see any white buffalo, Lieutenant Bannister. Maybe in the covered wagon. You men spread out and stop anyone who tries to get away. Foster, take your squad around the right flank. Davis, cover the rear. Sergeant, you come with me. Yes, sir. We'll have a talk with this Madrigo fellow. Get up there. Get up. Madrigo and his men watched the approach of the soldiers. Matt himself was calm and poised. He signaled a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hello there, soldier. I want to talk to Matt Madrigo. I'm Madrigo, Lieutenant. What can I do for you? I understand you've got the white buffalo that belongs to Lame Bear's Indians. Yes, sir, that's right. I got the buffalo that did belong to the Indians. He's my property now. You stole him, Madrigo. And I'm going to place you and your men under arrest and take you back to the fort. Who says I stole a critter? An Indian brought the word to Colonel Graves late last night. An Indian, eh? Well, I'll just show you how wrong this Indian is. Trying to stir up trouble, that's what he's doing. I just ask you, Lieutenant, to look over this paper. What's that? Eh, that isn't a proper bill of sale. I'd like to know what is. I handed over $10,000 in gold for that animal. That's right. Sure. Oh, certainly looks regular enough. Witness by Lazat, the Indian agent. Uh, what do you intend to do with the buffalo? Well, I bought him for Pete Barlam, the circus man. Take a look at him in the wagon there. We got him wound up in enough rope to hog tie 40 steers. He'll be a lot more comfortable when we untie him and get him loaded into a cattle car. Buck to him. Ah, look at that, Sergeant. What an animal. No wonder the Indians place such a high value on him. Yes, sir. I've heard stories of the white buffalo ever since I came into this country. But I never quite believed there was such an animal. Lieutenant, I got a hunch there's something fishy about this deal. Hadn't we better herd the whole outfit back to the fort and let the colonel investigate for himself? Sergeant, Madrigas' bill of sale seems to be perfectly legal. We can't take the law into our own hands. If we hurry, however, we might have time to send a scout to Lame Bear's village and confirm Madrigo's story before the noon freight leaves Buckthorn. If we hurry. So let's go. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Been a pleasure meeting a smart young officer like yourself. Goodbye. Come on, Sergeant. Get up! Get up! See, boys, how easy it was. <laughs> yeah, Matt, but those soldiers are downright suspicious. I doubt that any scout can get to Lame Bear's village and back to the railroad by noon. We'll not take any chances. We'll burn the trail and get the bull loaded on the train as soon as possible. All right, come on, boys, let's get going. Get off! Tonto, picking up the trail of the Lone Ranger who had joined Black Eagle, rode fast to break the bad news that his mission had failed, that Madrigo had fooled the young lieutenant with a paper he said had been signed by Lame Bear and the Indian agent. That's a forged bill of sale, Tonto. Uh, how can that be proved before you ship the white buffalo? We have two hours. Not right. It'll take much longer than that to reach Lame Bear's village over the main trail. There's a shortcut through the Rim Rock Flats. Silver old boy, do you think we could make it? Well, we'll try. Otto, you and Black Eagle will follow Madrigo onto the railroad. Mm, we do it. I'll try to get back in time with a Zot, the Indian agent. Old Henry Ames, a marshal at Buckthorn, will do his duty if he has the evidence. One silver! The Lone 
Lone Ranger knew that every minute counted. He urged the great horse, Silver, to greater and even greater speed. At a pace that would have killed an ordinary horse, the mighty stallion flashed across the open country to the masked man's destination. The morning was half gone when the Indian agent's office came into view. A moment later... Hey there. Easy, big fella. I want to see you, Lazat. I've got you covered, mister. Before we do any further talking, you'd better account for that mask. Who are you? Uh, we'll discuss that later. Right now, I've got to ask you a question. How you... Did you know that the white buffalo was sold? Sold? What kind of a joke is that? It's no joke. The Indians wouldn't sell that buffalo at any price. The men who claim to have bought it are showing a bill of sale to prove they paid the Indians $10,000 in cash. I don't believe it. The bill of sale was witnessed by you. That's a lie. More likely, it's a forgery. Your name is signed. What? Then it is a forgery. Who are these men? Where are they? What's their game? I'll take you to them. I'll saddle a horse right away. All right, come on, I'll help you. It was later in the morning when Toto and the Indian boy Black Eagle reached the town of Buckthorn. They found a crowd of townspeople gathered at the railroad spur to watch the almost legendary white buffalo as Madrigo's men tried to get it on a cattle train. All right, get some more rope to the critter's neck. Four or five of you boys pull on the rope. Come here, pull the critter's pole. Black Eagle, me talk to Marshal. Maybe him get back white buffalo. Mister? Yeah? Madrigo steal white buffalo. Him belong lame bears people. Madrigo take Black Eagle captive. Madrigo has a bill of sale that looks all right. Will Black Eagle swear out a warrant? Well, him understand, but him not talk. White man talk. Maybe Lazat come soon. He signed the bill of sale. I can understand why Black Eagle is angry, but I don't see what I can do about it. All right, haul in rope. Get that animal on fire. Hey there, Madrigo. Easy with that bull. Fight your own business, My own business? You come here, Madrigo. Come here. Uh, don't get sore, Marshal. I didn't mean to speak sharp at you. I won't tolerate no cruelty, see? You tell your men to watch how they handle that buffalo. Uh, we'll be more careful, Marshal Ames. That's it, fellas. Now you got it. The white buffalo at last made up its mind to enter the cattle car. Black Eagle sobbed and chanted softly as he saw the bull disappear inside the car. And then the car door slammed shut. Uh, that's us, boys. Now we can get aboard the train. Go ahead, pile aboard while I signal the engine in. Well, looks like the last year white buffalo, huh, Black Eagle? Look! Look, coming down trail. Great shot. Look at that white horse that's leading the way. Him, friend. Him bring news. He's mad. That's right. Hey, that man in back of him. That's Lazat, the Indian agent. What's he doing this far from his office? Black Eagle. Maybe Buffalo not go away. Don't let that train leave. What's he say? Not let train leave. Hurry up, boys. Get up for that train. Stay right where you are, Madrigo. Hey, who are you? Uh, Marshal Ames. Yeah, but... Uh, Kemus Harvey. Yes. White Buffalo already on train. Hurry up, engineer. Get this train rolling. Get us out of here. Marshal Ames, those men get away with a white bull... There'll be an Indian uprising. It will mean a lot of bloodshed. What do you mean? Ask the Indian agent. Oh, steady. Yes, he's right. Those men are stealing the white bull. But they showed a bill of sale. You witnessed it. It was a forgery. Then Buffalo not sold. No, Toto. Hold on, Amadrigo. Stay right where you are. Tell your men to get off that train. Oh, yeah? We're pulling out of here, and if anyone tries to stop us, we'll open fire. Looks like they're holding all the aces. They've got the bull inside the car, and they're all holding guns. We'll have a fight on our hands and we're outnumbered. For a moment, it looked as though Matt Madrigo would get away with a white buffalo despite the masked man's efforts. The train was hissing steam. It was ready to pull out toward the state line. Rather than have a lot of gunplay, I'll telegraph ahead to stop the train. Soldiers will take the buffalo off tomorrow or the next day. That will be too late. Lame Bear's warriors will take the war path before nightfall. Civilization will be set back half a lifetime in this country. Don't you try to start anything, Mr. Marshal. We're leaving here and we don't aim to be stopped. You won't get far. We'll take that chance. Black Eagle, call your friend. Call the white bull. Tell him to come to you. <laughs> the effect of the Indian boy's loud shouts was something to behold. There was a mighty roar from inside the cattle car. And then a crash and a splitting of timber as a powerful bull charged against the door. I'll get you for that. Madrigo brought his gun to bear on Black Eagle, but the heavy gun of the Lone Ranger spoke first. The outlaw's hand went limp as a bullet shattered his wrist. The gun player started. Come on, Lazard, get into it. Right. 
Madrigo's men, realizing that they had been exposed, were fighting for their freedom. Several ducked for cover and kept Marshal Ames, the Lone Ranger, and others at bay, while two hurried to the engine cab to get the train started toward the east. Then new horsemen came into view. It's the soldiers! They're just in time. I hope they know which side they're on. They think Madrigo has an honest deal. The soldiers knew the right side. They had talked to Lane Bear. They came in with their carbines barking in the direction of Madrigo's men. After that, the fight was over quickly. By <laughs> Juniper, mister. Looks like we and the soldiers have that whole gang rounded up in hogtie. The army will take care of the Marshal Ames. And if testimony is needed, I'll be on hand to give it. There'll be charges far more serious than forgery against those crooks. Uh, just one thing, mister. Yes? Who are you? What does that mask mean? The Indian agent asked me the same question, Marshal. In view of the fact that this man prevented an Indian uprising that might have wiped out every homesteader on the prairie... I decided that I wouldn't press him to remove his mask. Thanks, Lazat. Come on, Toto. Our horses are waiting. Black Eagle waiting over there with White Buffalo. Well, that mask man. Who can he be? So you don't know who he is, huh, Lazat? Oh, how would I know? <laughs> well, I could guess. And I'll bet two to one I'd be right if I guessed that he was the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.